Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over some styling techniques for a small contact form. I'm going to go ahead and build a small form here using a couple text text boxes and a text area box, something you might use on a contact form, but then I really want to focus on some styling techniques. So first order of business, I already do have a page kind of started here, and if you look at the video description, you can grab the demo file that I'm using, and I'm going to take a second just to put down a few basic form elements along with some labels. There we go. So I have a small form set up. got an input text box for the person's name. I have an input email box for the person's email address, and I have a text area box for them to type out a multi-line message. And of course, then I have a submit button. All forms will have a submit button, and then the closing form tag. Now by default, how's this form going to look on our browser? And there we go. And it's pretty sloppy, but we do learn a lot by seeing this unstyled form on there. And basically, our labels and our inputs are inline elements. So they are simply going to try to be in the same line up into the point to where they have to basically text wrap. So we definitely want to change this up a bit. Um, the first thing that I've actually seen, I've seen this on professional sites too, is at the very least they'll, they'll throw in some break tags something like this and so that they start to get these on separate lines still looks sloppy still looks messy okay so ultimately most good-looking web forms will have nice neat uh, alignment of the various elements if I jump over this is Zappos this is the contact form over at Zappos and this is I think a good one for us to be inspired by and it's very simple actually but notice that for their labels they've actually got right align text for their labels I'll probably jump over to that in a few minutes and then of course we see their text boxes where each thing is kind of filled is is the same width each text box is the same width but they all line up nice and neat so let's jump back to our messy form and let's get cracking on making this look a little bit cleaner and it's not that tough to do so I'm gonna head over I'm going to get rid of those break tags first. I don't want to use those for a styling. That's creating, that's uh, break tags are for creating a line break within a paragraph. So I am back to my original. Okay, so just so we can see what's going on here, I'm going to head over to and create a rule really quick for my labels. And I will put a thin border on them just so we can see them. So now we can see where those labels are. And there's remember, there's a couple techniques for using a label. I'm using one of the two techniques where I take the label and I wrap it around the input. And I'm doing that so that a user can click on the label text and activate the text box. I can click on the label, like for message, and activate the message box. So that's the benefit of wrapping the input with the label tags. I would like each of these to be on their own line and of course there's an easy way to do that. I can go to these labels and convert them into a block element and as soon as I do that each label is on its own line. So that was a pretty easy method right there. Now some other things that I can do, I can start to put a little bit of space around them, a little bit of margin, how about just five pixels. So a little bit of spacing. Now for the tricky part, I'd like to get these text area boxes or text boxes and email boxes and text area boxes kind of lined up. So the way I'm going to do that first is I think I'm going to push them over to the right side of the label. So check this out. I'll go to my labels and I'm going to do a position relative. And then I'm going to go to the inputs that are in the label. Now I've got multiple kinds of inputs. I have um, certainly a type text, I have a type email, but I've also got a text area box. So I might have to do this in a couple ways. I'll do a group selector label text area. And for these I'm going to do a position absolute and I'm going to put them over to the right zero pixels. And what's that that's going to do? It's going to take those items and push them all the way over to the right. Now that's really far away. So what I can do now is I can head up to my labels and I can adjust their widths. And I'm just going to guess here. I'll put in 250 pixels to start. And by making those labels smaller, we get those text boxes closer to their label text. That was obviously too small. So I'll just kind of 
knock this out a little bit better and I could probably, in fact, I'll think I'll leave it there, but I'll make my text boxes wider. So now we're starting to see, all right, things are looking a little bit better here. In addition to controlling the positioning of my text area boxes and inputs, I'll go ahead and set their width and I'll set these to 200 pixels so that they all have a consistent width. Now you notice that I'm getting a slight difference though in my text area box. If that's really troubling to you, and it might be, you just might have to account for that one a little bit separately. So I could create another rule just for text area, and I could set its width to 202 pixels. So it's just a little bit wider. In fact, maybe 201 would look pretty good. Now that these are starting to get sized and styled the way I want, I can go ahead and remove those red borders. And now things are starting to look lined up nice and neat. And now for that submit button, I'll use something like an attribute selector. Input square bracket type equals submit. Closing square bracket. And then for this, I can, you know, I can say, let's I'll put the margin top of 20 pixels and I'll stick it over on the right side for now just to kind of get it out of the way and I can move that submit button off to the side. I think in the next video I want to do some slight variations of this so that we can experiment with other ways to do some basic styling of a web form.